inshallah and ashe as always divine wills blessings to you and for you and welcome to the weekly snippet once again i am your host the tanya d i'm a practicing holistic shaman medium and otherworldly life coach a spirit coach i guess a subtle energetic surgeon and a reflector by design just following the lunar energies through the seasons of the celestial bodies along with the gates and human design reflecting back into the environment what's happening a human mirror i do call myself a holistic shaw medium which is a choreography of them all just orchestrating mapping out the four pathways one design at a time i really am here to show you who you are why you arrived on the planet at this particular time through actually gift and purpose we all come with a gift and we all have a purpose and if you are new to my show my channel please heartfelt subscribe ring the bell to alert other celestial beings that really resonate with my frequency in my show. Weekly lunar guidance insights, mystic messages, the elementals, and so much more echoing out in our field. But we are evolving our inner glimmer. Who are we? Who we are? Why we have arrived? But we are also radiating our brilliance, our inner starlight. So it's time to really step into our golden heart, our golden self, our higher self, and really tidying up the scenes at the end of this cascading Aries season, very energetic in some ways. But as we move into Taurus season, like we're just kind of cleaning up the streams and reflect our energies this week on the lunar insights as we gravitate here. Let's go there. Great to do that. Cancer. The moon is still in Cancer. Over the weekend, it's raining here, cleansing the air in Salt Lake City, nourishing the soil, nutrients. Who doesn't love the smell of rain? I know I sure do. Uh, but nature. Nature is showering upon us. And reflectors are really kind of health barometers, amongst other things. Ra, I believe, described reflectors as kind of canaries getting sent into the mines, um, the air, right? Um, you can also journey into Gift and Purpose. The replay is out on the highway along with the guidebook. If you're in the Shamanic Killing Academy, it's already uploaded there. And if you are still at a crossroads, maybe you're unclear, you're experiencing forces of adversity. We kind of all are. Uh, schedule a divination, a soul support session. I do believe energy is truly the medicine of the future. I've been toting that for over 30 years. Uh, but I talk about the elementals, the subtle energies, the imaginal realm, the celestial highway, and really using the elements, all of them, not just wood, fire, earth, metal, water. Uh, there's also sound, there's star, there's light, there's ether, there's the galaxy, nature, so on and so forth. There's so much. I do prescribe rituals as medicine from an otherworldly medicine cabinet for healing what ails you, for guidance and getting clarity and other things. So it's time to use your key to really access and open the door to new opportunities, new pathways. And being that our body is energetic, it's reflective of what's going on inside. It's that yin energy. It's actually going to show up first at the level of the skin and also what we apply to our skin. It gives us telltale signs, alert signals, sending those signals into the physical. That truly is why beauty really is health made visible. It shines from the inside to the out. Now, the Shamanic Healing Academy, this is my online coven, if you will. It's a grimoire. It has all of my intuitive offerings, really for an introductory offer of only $19.99. Join me in my online virtual coven, the Shah in the medium. That's where that kind of came from. But this is an online coven really designed for you to not just learn from me, but also share your own gift, your purpose, your magic, your insights. Along with your purpose, you know, you really can't talk about one without the other. And that's really how community is connectivity. Uh, the Coven in the Shamanic Healing Academy is really an online community. I do go live in that venue as well. I do love the word Coven. I think we need to kind of get back to the time when uh, we actually were radiating our brilliance on the earth, which is more than a gathering of witches, right? Covens are collective. It's people who meet regularly. It's a place, it's a sacred space to really gather and just recognizing um, as well, you know, all of the elementals, animal totems, nature spirits, wet amaze, contumbly, along with their gifts, their magic, their purpose, um, and being, you know, our energy being that resides within each and every one of us. 
just gathering weekly, sometimes monthly, sometimes random hits of knowledge. Reflectors are random, right? Um, so just you're going to have access to all of my online courses and some ritual magic as well. It is a membership or mentorship opportunities. I'm all about options as well, and I'm sure you can feel it as well. So my retreats, um, they're more about the elementals, ritual kinds of gatherings, and being a seer of the unseen, following the goddess of the night, the moon, through the seasons, along with the astral signs, just mapping out those emotions, along with the gates and the channels of human design. Um, and if you haven't yet subscribed here on YouTube, please ring the bell. It really activates other waters, I'll say, taking my watch times into the infinite, out into the corridor there. The other world is always watching and listening and very much paying attention. So share with your friends, be the star that I know you are. We all glimmer, right? And for other mystical musings, including spilling the tea, which is actually happening this Friday, uh, I go live once a month in my Musing News subscribers. People who have subscribed to my email list, I should say. Spilling the Tea, it's an online event, the third Friday of each month through Zoom and also in the online coven. I'm trying to map out both of those. 11.30 a.m. Mountain Time, so if you're not into Zoom, I do have a log in there. But join the Shamanic Healing Academy seriously for monthly access, for calls and guidance and just bonus content and so much more. That's also as well. And then Reflector's Guidance this week, like I said earlier, Cancer. The moon is still in Cancer, squaring off with the sun in Aries, plus some nodal action there. So you might be feeling your feelings, you know, or maybe are you or did you do some internal self-care over the weekend and actually continuing throughout the day today. Nature, it's an earthly energy. It's a nurturing energy. It's the moon. It's the mother, right? Um, I'll get to the elementals shortly as well. But were you able to get out in nature over the weekend and really connect and maybe plant some daisies, dig in the dirt, and elevate your inner nurturing goddess, just nurturing the world inside and out? So with the moon in a square to the sun, you know, we have this action energy with our emotions. Maybe it's like poking the bear, our feelings. So really being self-nurturing in the actions that we take and how we respond to ourselves. Respond in kind, you know, I know it can be a challenge myself, my Dad lives with me, so if you have a parent living with you, I know you know what I'm communicating there. Sometimes it gets rough. Just remember to be compassionate, but also mark your calendars. May 26, Mars, that fiery energy, is actually going to be aligned with the eclipsed degree, so you might have like a glimmer that's extra golden or a tidal wave. We might get a little more fiery action there, so communication may be a little topsy turvetish as well because Mercury's retrograde. I've known I've had some issues with technology, I'll say. And I'm a Gemini, so there's that. And then the moon also moves into the season of Leo. I love that lion, right? Uh, Tuesday through Thursday, we have the sun and Mars. It's a fiery energy, sparks of actually initiating or taking action on some internal self-love. It's like, how do we feel about who we are? Are we self-loving? Do we act on love? Do we feel lovable? Um, and just really taking a course of action to change things to be more self-loving. And then into the weekend, we've got the moon, of course, in Virgo. Uh, boy, our feelings become real as we act upon them. And it, this all plays out in the house, of course, that uh, Virgo rules in your chart, uh, going around the natals, right? So this is like reality. It's like things coming home, feeling real. Um, I'm just kind of browsing through my brain where... Uh, the elementals will be moving into this week. So yeah, at the end of the week, you know, it's going to be probably watery, more emotions with the elementals, by the way. <laughs> and then on the menu this week, of course, uh, what do we have on Friday? Of course, I just announced this, spill the tea. If you've subscribed to my Musing newsletter, you get the invite automatically. You get the Zoom link. Um, and then, of course, we have the Shamanic Healing Academy, which I already talked about, the Shah in the Medium. That's only $19.99 per month. It really is an online grimoire of every one of my offerings for only $19.99, plus a community, a coven of really like-minded energies. And then next month, I'm super excited, um, following Gift and Purpose, whoopsie, following Gift and Purpose, I'm actually doing an 
six week immersion. These two kind of go together, by the way. The Elemental Pathway. It starts May 8th. It's going to be 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Um, and also I'll be doing the Full Moon and Scorpio Meditation. That's going to be arriving very soon as well. And hopefully you have subscribed on YouTube so you kind of get the downloads. Be sure to do. So besides the Celestial Energies and podcasts, I have both new and full moon meditations, moon rituals, along with my weekly show, Following the Moon. So just be sure to connect, especially if you're at a crossroads, you're confused, lost, stuck, any of those things. Things happen for us, not to us. And it's just about our looking at things through a different set of eyes. And then on the Elemental Highway this week, Boy, let's take a breath and a pause, Tanya. Uh, we do have a very heavy, earthy day. Look at all that earth, all that yellow, right? We've got that complete mountain range with a meadow. Um, I can't say that we don't need more earth, right? We don't need fire either because there's so much earth, maybe a candle or a warming tool. But yin earth rooster of a day, our day is inward. It's intercontemplation, inner conversations. Um, I'm actually kind of going with metal. We've got so much earth and metal takes the energy away from the earth. It's the creativity. It's crystals. It's car industries. It's a great day to sign a contract. Um, it's kind of that. This would be somebody who's kind of a leader, really. Uh, kind leader. So really taking care of ourselves, nurturing ourselves as well, and just understanding the energy, being more compassionate. There's no flow here, though. The water is hidden. It's deep. It's in storage. So those are like deep seeded, seeded like seeds, <laughs> deep seeded secrets, patience, uh, thoughtful energies as well. And yang earth to a yin day is the competition, jealousy. So people are going to be fighting and competing, sibling rivalry. You may actually feel as if you are alone, really, um, just lonely. That's kind of what it feels like. But you're actually not. We have an entire village in the subtle realms, the other world, if you will. That's what I'm going with. We do have a ton, or I do have a ton, by the way. I have a ton of fairy rings. I've been creating a relationship with the Fae for over 20 years in my village here where I live. All of the houses in my neighborhood, ironically, have fairy rings. And I really giggled about this actually yesterday morning or this morning. Pretty funny uh, plus, right? Uh, the corporate building thing that's been tearing down nature in my village created this funnel that blew over my huge spruce tree. And that's where I was actually um, creating my relationship with the Fae. So now they've kind of gone all over the neighborhood. Really makes sense. Fairy rings throughout the neighborhood, right? Uh, but back to our day. Uh, the rooster. The rooster is the soil, yin, metal, refined metal, gracious, shiny, Um Nature or wood is our ambition, the yang wood there, leadership ability. So this is a very strong leader, a kind leader, innovative leader, but also structured and refined. Yin wood is kind of uh, sneaky and unkind. That's what's in the dragon for this particular day. One that's probably on the other side of kindness, uh, possibly somebody who's angry or shouts a lot. Uh, we do have hidden yin wood. Uh, that's kind of where that's coming from. And how many of you are enjoying the elementals? This is also, um, our stomach, our spleen, our lymphatic system, it's about moving. It's great to drink our greens, eat our salads, all this earth energy. That's kind of what I'm going with. But it's um, arugula, spinach, chard, kale, deep, earthy kind of greens. That's kind of what I'm sensing as far as food. Uh, yin water is wealth, wealth like our savings within the two dragons there. So that's kind of happening all month long. Different frequencies, though, as the day changes, by the way. Uh, but the mountain range, so go digging for that gold. Uh, nature would be great to break up the earth, the meadow, mow the lawn, do some trimming, do some edging, metal tools, right? Also planting flowers, digging in the soil, kind of goes with the moon. Uh, water and metal would actually be the elementals that I would probably course more rituals towards. On this particular day, nature as well to break up the earth. But we are lacking, you know. I wouldn't do the fires unless you don't feel very charismatic. Um, and since heaven is raining upon us, at least in Utah, we are getting things, um, things are breaking through into the soil, nurturing the soil, inner world to the outer world. So that's kind of what that feels like. But there's a lot of earth today. So you might feel like hunkering in, which we need to move, which is actually ironically a fire energy is movement and action and cardiovascular 
and uh, yeah, taking it out there. Now the messages this week, let's just switch the cameras. There I is. And let's uh, go right there. Fantastic. Okay, the messages this week as we're glimmering our gold. I almost went with the Fae, but I actually chose the angels. So today on this moon's day, what do we have here? Oh, we've got death, angel of transformation. Who doesn't love that? We've had this a couple times, so I feel like we're really transforming. It's a Scorpio energy, death, right? But this is really fantastic. We are on the season of transformation, change as well, elementally symbolized by the flowers being picked and entering into a new phase. It's kind of, it really is the ending of the old, the birthing of something new. Um, I really like that. Saying goodbye to the old, the old way of being maybe and opening up a new door, a new way of accepting, um, being different. Time to like cleanse and refresh. Going with the flow of life and being optimistic. Opportunities are truly on their way, right? Uh, all that glimmers is gold. Just really feel it, really believe it, and just open up your heart to the divine love just pouring in from the heavenly universe. And smell, in this case, the poppies. They kind of remind me of hibiscus, just saying. Uh, but embrace change and transformation. That's kind of what's happening on this day. And then Tuesday, which is Mars Day, right? This is a day for action, which is kind of, oh my God, it's funny. Can you see that? That's the Nine of Swords, also stress. It's otherworldly. You can't tell that from your angle, but my angle, maybe I shouldn't do that. But either way, to me, this is the swords are falling away. Our stresses are falling away from us with the Nine of Swords. I'm really loving this. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. The stress falling away. Doesn't that just sound fantastic? And what's curious, or at least I think it's curious, it's a nine on a Mars day, which is nine, right? So this is an action we take or the action we don't take. I feel as if uh, the wires are maybe being crossed in my brain a little bit. But swords are also air. So this is communication, the words we speak, invoke as well. And Aries is an action energy. It's our I am kind of statement. Um, I act, so I am. It's like what behavior do we take? Even on a degree that really adds to a nine on a Grandmaster nine day. This is going to be very um, influential tomorrow, just saying. Um, I would be taking a breath and a pause and really releasing, maybe innovate. Innovate some change. Innovate your feelings. It's definitely saying that we are cutting away from the old, right, swords, and transforming to the new. All the worries, the doubts, the fears, uh, stuff like that are really being resolved. Uh, stress is dissipating. I find this really fascinating and also really exciting all in the same day. And then on Wednesday, which is Mercury's Day, Communicator Day, that's why I go live on Wednesdays, to be honest, just because it's Mercury's Day, and I'm a Gemini, so I open up to that, being live and communicating. Um, so this is a day where the actions we take. Oh, my goddess. And then we've got strength, which is great. And this is the angel of courage. So this is actually initiating Courage, strength, our inner diva uh, to manifest. You know, we are doing fantastic. So we do have the angel of courage. I'm going with that. Coming from a day of initiating and cutting away, releasing the bonds that are holding us. It takes courage. It takes strength sometimes to cut those cords, right? And this adds to 11. So this is like finding a newfound love, inner strength, inner courage. Maybe we love the courage that we're initiating and allowing ourselves to kind of roar like a lion, trusting ourselves, loving ourselves, being in tune with ourselves. It's energy, vitality, inner strength, a show of strength, an act of kindness maybe, really resolves an act of anger or forgiveness instead of resentment, something different, initiating change. So really holding our inner courage, holding our position, being stable and reflecting and waiting and then initiating or taking the action that actually feels fantastic. Uh, being wise, right? And also being patient. Things come to us, right? And just feeling your inner courage, those acts of courage. This feels great. Then on Jupiter's Day, what do we have for Jupiter's Day? Thursday. Oh my goddess. We've got the Ace of Wands. In I like in spirit nation, but it says inspiration the angel of spirit there. Who doesn't need some in-spirit nation? 
So this is when we come into our own power on Thursday, Jupiter's Day, a very exciting, expanding, adding abundant kind of energy, ideas taking shape or form, and our radiance and our brilliance is like just out there, shining, glimmering, uh, plans, create plans, take action for the plans. This is also the energy of fertility on Jupiter's Day, so that really is growth, right? Being on fertile grounds, being inspired to begin something new, whether it's a career, a new relationship, a new home decoration, something like that, a business, even a business breakthrough possibly, but it's the time is now. This is organic ambition. You kind of get the gist of all that, and I'll take that. I hope you do too. Super exciting. I got fun stuff happening. I'm sure you do too, right? Um, then on Venus's day, which I call Fantastic Friday, of course, every day is fantastic. Uh, who do we have here? Oh, my goddess. We've got the Queen of Sheba, or at least the Queen of Wands. Creativity, and I'm loving that sunflower. Who doesn't love a big, juicy sunflower? I'm telling you, I do. I think I'm going to plant some this year um, <laughs> around the house. But this is the rising, rising with the sun. It's also creativity. Uh, this is going to be a very yummy week. I can already kind of taste it. I can feel it already. Uh, but creativity, I think we're going to be impassioned. We go all the way from one, which is the wand, to the queen in like two days. Uh, but this is having eloquence, being determined, uh, queenliness next to godliness or goddessness. In Spirit Nation, it's also support um, and just acknowledging, you know, she's acknowledging how far we've come. It's time for us to acknowledge. It's time for us to step into our power. We've got the courage and just align, explore, and imagine your ideal future. Vision it. And if you can really hold the vision every day, adding energy to that vision every day, tune into your intuition, look for answers there. We've all got guidance, right? We have got our own inner guidance system. And really allow spirit to connect you to your tribe, your community, your village. That's kind of what's happening here. I think this is all fantastic. <laughs> Just saying. And then the mystic message for the week. Let's dry. Let's switch me out a little here. There I go. Back to where I once was. The mystic message for the week. And where, oh, where? So the mystic message for the week, I am hilarious. I am actually going with, I trust in my ability to stay strong, uh, make that glimmer. That's coming from the strength card, by the way. And with that, I say, Ashe, blessings. Be sure to join me for spilling the tea in my coven on Friday. If you have yet to subscribe to my email list, there's always that opportunity as well. So with that, I say, Ashe, blessings. <music>